But hey guys, I hope you're all doing extremely well out there, and uh, this is a fast turnaround from the last channel update, but this is a bit of a different type of update to a degree, because I'm not really, I'm going to talk a little bit about stuff that's going on here and there and everywhere, but not as much as progressed since the last update as it usually is, but a lot of things to catch up on the last week, a lot of things have happened to talk about and update you on where things are in progress or where I said they were supposed to be going places last time, and so on and so forth, so... We got a Sleepaway Camp 2 commentary out now. The Sleepaway Camp 3 commentary will be out before the end of the month. And then after that, me and Steve kind of figured, kind of settled on, okay, August, we're going to end up doing Body Bags with a John Carpenter anthology film type of thing, TV movie thing. And since we're banging around so much in the Gremlins commentary, we're just going to do UHF, the weird old Yankovic movie. What are, what are the cases? He's got this Shot Factory Blu-ray. I've got the old DVD, so I'm going to watch all this stuff. I can watch... Body bags up on Peacock. Then I can watch the DVD of UHF. We get caught up. We'll meet up uh, early August, record the commentaries, and it'll be out there. So, light fair. Probably, they're probably like about 90 minutes a piece or something else like that. So, breezy type of affair on that regard. We like some short things. We got so bogged down with like It's Chapter 2 and Dark Knight Rises, like these three hour fucking movies. It's a little too much. I know a lot, of, a lot of people have been throwing it out there about whether or not we're going to do a commentary for Heat, since I'm doing the retro videos theory, series thing, talking about how the film keeps changing, it's color grading, and the edits it's done, and stuff, stuff, stuff like that, which is the thing that's in editing right now. I finally got through... I shot the thing twice. I shot, I shot an entire first version, and it didn't work. The thing just didn't work. How I went through everything, it felt... It just didn't work. By the end of it, I was like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I shut it off and walked away from it. Then several days passed, and I re had to reassess how I wanted to go at the whole thing. And then it was it was uh, Thursday night. It's like, okay, I got out of work an hour early. So that was the big, major, helpful point of that for me. Because earlier that day, I was like, okay, if I want to get this, this, and the other things I want to get done this weekend, I got to get this thing done tonight. I've got to reassess exactly what I want to do. i got to restructure it. i got to figure out exactly how I want to go at it this time. And I got home, and I shot the whole thing, and it's done. So it's editing now. We just started editing it a little earlier tonight on Sunday. So it's going to take a while. The footage is like 45 minutes long. So I'll, I'll be trimming at least a couple of minutes off there, trimming some redundant stuff and things in here and there and everywhere. But I got this keep maybe about the first third maybe of the, the original footage before I actually got to talking about the color grading and stuff like that and the different transfers. So I got everything up, talking about Michael Mann being... A revisionist filmmaker going back and doing like a theatrical cut, then a director's cut, then maybe another director's cut, and a few editing alterations done to the film here and there and everywhere. And then I, then the new footage kicks in, talking about the color grading, but you probably won't tell the difference because the footage matches so well with my lighting and the setup and everything like that, you won't even notice. But so that's in progress. But everyone keeps kind of throwing it out there, oh, you guys going to do a heat commentary? I don't think so. I just, I just, I brought I brought it up to Steve a time or two. He's kind of nudged it off to the side. Just he, his thought was that it wasn't really the type of film we could engage in the way we usually engage with films with a little bit more lighthearted stuff, being a little more banter, funny type of things go off and comment on here and there. Sometimes you get some very analytical ones or break down certain screenplay things here and there. But for for a film that's two hours and fifty minutes, after I just talked about the three hour long drudges we had with some films that weren't very good. Heat is very much on the opposite side of that, but it's a matter of having enough to talk about for two hours and 50 minutes. They'll keep people engaged with the commentary. Despite the fact that I feel like I could probably pull it off to a degree, but I'll, if I'm doing this with a partner, I just have to make sure that we have enough things of a discussion point that feels fresh and feels like something we can talk about on the regular, not have like a minute or two or something else like that where I'm just kind of like watching the film and waiting for something to occur for us to comment on. So it's a difficult type of thing to kind of gauge in that regard. And I kind of feel like me and Steve just wanting to stick to stuff that's maybe like 90 minutes to 120 minutes, about anything under two hours, roughly. Right now, we feel like that's good. That's good for our schedules, kind of get in there, breezy type of stuff. We can get in and out. It engages very well. Films are paced very well, very tightly in that regard. The much longer stuff is, is a... Is a case by case basis but right now everything we're pretty much packed up until about halfway through november right now so we're not planning anything else out and of course when we hit november we're going to, have to figure out what we're going to do to plug in some holiday stuff 
I'm not sure yet. We haven't discussed it. It's not pertinent right now. But anyone who keeps asking about it, keeps throwing it out there, stuff like that, that's not happening right now. That's not something that's on the cards. It's not on our lists. We're not considering it. One of the cases, we're both big fans of it, but we just got to feel like we've got something something pertinent to say for that length of time on the entire film that keeps a certain pace with the conversation and keeps people engaged. So it's, it's a difficult type of thing. We both love the film. We're just not entirely certain it's suited for our type of commentary that we can do for it. So lay that to rest for now, guys. Where I'm just doing the retro video series thing. You can go back and watch the review video I did that was back in 2017, which is 50 minutes long. So hopefully this one will clock in about 40 minutes, maybe. We'll see how... I handled the footage. If I got to trim some things out that make it a little more snappy or succinct, but I felt like I was pretty good on the whole thing. So got a little rambly at the end of it. So I could probably trim up a few things here and there, and there'll be a few redundancies here and there that kind of trim out the raw footage, or I went back and we shot things and so stuff like that here and there and everywhere. So that stuff's in progress. Like I said, the commentaries are all laid out there, and uh, I'll, I'll probably talk about like potential review stuff later on in the video, but. Let's go about what I went through in the last week, because the main thing, the first thing to talk about is the entire debacle I had with Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. Because I had the entire thing set, I went off on Tuesday, took the entire day off to make sure I could see it as early as possible. I went off to an IMAX at an AMC theater that's about 15 or so minutes away from me. And this used to be a really, really good theater. I used to think the world of this theater. When I lived like an hour away from where I live now... I would go to this theater because I just thought so highly of it. It was a two-story theater. It had really good quality to it. I just thought really, really well of it because it was just a really good theater at the time. But the last couple of years, there's been certain qualities about it in some places where it feels a little lackluster in some places. The unfortunate thing I, I realized, I didn't realize it at the time of seeing the thing, but on Tuesday was the fact that they have not upgraded the seats in the IMAX theaters, for whatever reason, they're still maintaining those old seats, or other cases just to maintain that many seats, and not going with the big leather recliners that kind of take up more space, where they convert all the other ones like years and years ago. But I... I the, te- the problems I had with this theater was one, there's a dirt spot right in the middle of the damn screen. Now, this is not the, the big... This is not anywhere close to a big IMAX screen. It's pretty much like a regular size screen, with just the IMAX projection on it, which is just 2K, so it's not even the best. It's not, not the best of any kind. But I went there, I, I saw the film, I had, I'm going to get into other things. I don't, I don't want to get too long in this whole thing, but I had problems in terms of this dirt spot in the whole thing. I was disappointed that they used the old seats that are cramped or whatnot. I'm six foot four. I put my boots on, I'm six foot five. I've got these old cramped seats and stuff like that that's not very comfortable. I've got the guy in front of me, he's leaning back the whole time. Is, is things and plus my cup holder was broken, disrepair. I get a, after the film, I go to the washroom. There's half the so- soap dispensers don't work. A couple of the, the uh, freaking because they got all the motion sensor ones, so the no motion sensor faucets they weren't working. Place is a mess. There's a whole bunch of maintenance. But the fact is, I tried and tried and tried reaching out to the website, reaching out a, a dozen times on the fucking Twitter. No one gives a shit. The damn theater company just does not give a shit on on that quality of maintaining their stuff going back to people and talking and just uh making it right they're not interested in that i tr- tried contacting them tried complaining i tried every method possible no one was having any intention to me whatsoever no one gave a shit now of course as you mentioned many times in commentary steve is a former theater manager he worked for a certain uh more of a Midwest chain in that regard, but a very, very vast one in that regard. And I know he would have handled this thing. And was, if anyone came to him having those types of problems with a theater that he was the manager at, he would have taken care of the situation very, very well. He was very good at that type of stuff, very good at customer service. He would have handled that. I remember a whole time, years, years and years ago, I think it was, if you went back and watched my last Boy Scout video, I had a Top Gun poster for an AMC theater screening of it, which was about, I don't know, 2000, probably 2011, about 20, uh, whatever the case, whatever, whatever anniversary that is, I, I went and saw the film on that whole thing, and the problem was, it was a special screening, we were supposed to get a special poster, 
and stuff like that. And I didn't get a poster of the whole thing, so I contacted contacted the theater at the time when I got home because I was a, I was going to a theater that was pretty far away, a good half an hour, thirty five minutes or so away. But it was a really good theater that's no longer with us. But I contacted the, the theater saying, "Hey, I had certain problems with the thing. I think it was also the fact fact that." They're projecting it on the screen, but I didn't fill the full screen, so it was almost like it was window box, pillar box in that regard. So I was, I was very, I was a bit disappointed in that regard. So the guy eventually did contact me back. He gave me the poster when I came back. They were also hunted down an actual DVD copy of the film to give to me. I already had it on DVD. I didn't need it, so I kind of sold it for nothing on eBay. Really sold it for nothing. There was a time on eBay where. Oh, you you would post stuff for like ninety nine cents and just see people ramp up the freaking auctions. That didn't happen on this one. I sold it for like a buck, if even that. But regards to that, so the fact is I had a good experience with a theater manager who took care of business at that same chain, stuff like that. But this time, don't give a rat's ass. They didn't give a fucking rat's ass. So I didn't have a good time seeing the film. So I had this entire problem with that and dealing with the company and just being pissy and stuff like that. So I was like, okay, I gotta go, I gotta go see this again. To reassess the entire situation because I didn't have a good time with it because I had problems with different things here and there. So I went back. I, oddly enough, I got a $5 Stubbs reward certificate from that experience. And plus there's overpriced soda. It was like $7 for a regular size soda. Terrible. But anything like that. So we get moved beyond that. And I went off and saw an Adobe Cinema at a much better theater. The one I usually go to, but much further away. About twice as far away. And... It was a better experience in general because it's Adobe Cinema, it's a big screen, big theater, leather recliners, all that type of stuff. So very comfortable type of things. But I don't know what's going on with the digital, the cinematography in this film. They went from film, which all the other ones were shot on film. This one, they moved to digital for some bizarre reason. Moved the second unit director up to the main DP, uh, second unit DP up to the main DP, Fraser Taggart. And I don't know what the hell is going on with this thing. One, there's a lot of times with these weird dialogue scenes where the the 180 degree rule keeps getting broken all over the place and people keep shifting eye lines and they're jumping around. They're moving from this side of the screen to this side of the screen, up, down, around, and moving. It was bizarre. I don't know what the fuck anyone's doing with the cinematography and the editing of this goddamn movie. And the bigger thing with the digital cinematography, like, it didn't look good. And I, on like a technical pixel level, the thing just didn't look good in either screen, which was... 2K IMAX, 4K Dolby Vision, Dolby Cinema Projection, the both of them, the Dolby Cinema one did sound better. The Dolby Atmos sounded better than the IMAX audio. The, the, the Dolby Cinema one looked a little bit better, but I still had problems. Like Sometimes it looked like there was like obscured definition on people's faces, and sometimes when people are like backlit, there's like no detail on certain people's faces. And I felt like there's shots that were like out of focus at some points in time and it just, I had a real messy time with this cinematography it was like I couldn't stop critiquing it over both viewings I thought the, the IMAX one was a problem with the quality of the IMAX type of thing so I know it's not it's not IMAX with laser or the big type of things or whatnot so it was like the 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 bargain basement IMAX version of it despite it still cost me $13 on a discount day as a matinee so that would have been like absorbently expensive otherwise, but even the, the 4K Dolby Vision projection thing, it just it were, I just had problems with it. I just had really distinct problems. Some, sometimes the shots look really good. They had a lot of detail on certain close-ups in some places, but other times it looked like someone had a wrong setting on the camera or something like that. It got overly compressed. It's like watching overly compressed Blu-ray. It is just weird. Like It all crunches out the details. It just had problems all, all over the place. With the film itself as a critique... I've got a lot of problems with it. It wasn't as good as any of the other one. I'm not going to say as any of the other ones because I did mention all the crap I had about Mission 2. So I didn't finish watching that one because it wasn't very good. But I, I, I liked all the other ones. I didn't like this one nearly as well as any, any of the other ones. And this is just the fact, one, they got this entire plot of this AI construct type of thing called the Entity. And I just can't wrap my head completely around this entire idea. I, I understand the plot points much more on the second time around, but I was just like... I need a, I need a tangible threat. I, I don't feel a threat from this mechanized computer gigabyte type of thing going on. I have no idea. It just feels too too weird because these films work very well 
when there's a tangible threat. You can see this guy's got a bomb or the guy, Owen Davian's got the rabbit's foot and this guy's his major arms deal. It's like whatever the hell this thing actually is because this guy wants it to sell to the highest bidder. That makes it extremely dangerous. You don't want this in this guy's hands. If he wants to sell this thing for like billions of dollars or something, this is dangerous. Anything like that. You had the syndicate or cobalt or whatever the hell it was. You had tangible threads you could understand. And this entity thing is just a little too... requires way too much exposition in the entire film. There's too many exposition dumps all over this entire damn film to explain what it is, what it can do, what the threat is, what it can get into every system and do this, that, and the other thing, and what the threat is and why everyone wants it. It's like it's just too much stuff all over the place. The action's fantastic. I love the entire cast. They're actually phenomenal performances. Haley Atwell's fantastic. Isai Morales, he's wonderful. The guy's got such magnetism on screen. I thought Palm Klimatev, she's fantastic in this almost silent assassin role. Everyone's so good. Just the story just doesn't quite function as well for me. I, I felt... I've, I've posted all over social media, all over the community tabs. I've posted enough stuff. I won't bog it down too much, but it's just the script, the story, or whatnot. It just didn't it didn't work for me. And of course, these other cinematography issues and all these di dialogue scenes, just like they're so disorienting, felt very amateurish, as one of my actor friends has said. And, and just I had too many problems. And the more I think about it, the more I kind of regret going going to see it a second time. So it was like, one, because I could have been a lot more constructive with my day doing other things over here than kind of like going off to see a three-hour movie and taking that big chunk of time out of my afternoon. But I'm, I'm just not taken with the film very much. I think there's great action sequences, but they kind of spoil all the action sequences on all the trailers. So it's not a lot of, much to surprise or whatnot, not, not to be kind of just odd or whatnot. So... Maybe maybe in six, four or five months it gets a Blu-ray and I go back to it and maybe it works better for me. But right now, uh, I'm just conflicted about the whole thing. I'm just like, eh, it's got great performances, great action sequences, just like the, the qualities and the mechanics of the story just don't quite function for me. And I'm kind of done with these two and a half to three hour long movies. I'm just fucking done. I'm just I'm not I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not doing it anymore. The other film, I looked over the entire release schedule over on IMDb. The only other film I'm interested in seeing at all being released this year theatrically is Last Voyage of the, Me the Demeter, which is this entire like section of the Bram Stoker Dracula novel where Dracula's on the boat and it's been described as like alien on a crew, on like a, on a, on a ship, on like, like a voyage ship or whatnot, on the sea or whatnot. The trail looks fantastic. I love the idea of this whole thing. I'm really jazzed for it. It looks really cool. I want to see this film, and it's just under two hours. Perfect. Perfect. Give it to me. It comes out in about a month. I think it's about August 11, and it hits uh, theaters and whatnot. So I'm, I'm, I'm amped for it. I'm looking forward to it. But I'm just, I'm just a little exhausted from, like, watching all these things. It had to be, like, three hours long. Some of them were good. The Batman was great. John Wick Chapter 4 I really, really, really liked. I liked it a lot. I liked John Wick a lot more than this film. So in that regard, but... I think I'm just done. I'm just t tired of having to figure out three to four hours of my day to chunk out and just kind of throw out to the wind because it takes me half an hour to get to the theater sometimes and stuff like that. And you got to sit through 20 minutes of trailers. It's just too much. I'm just a little exhausted from this deluge of like, it got to be so fucking long. I'm just tired of it. I just want a nice 90 minute movie. How's, that? How's about that? A nice, solid 90 minute movie. Get in, get out. Lean storytelling. No fat. Go for it. So anyway, I like that. So there's that stuff. So I had problems. I have canceled my 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 AMC stubs, not the A-list, but just the regular membership thing was coming up for renewal at the end of this month. I've now canceled it. I will not be going back to AMC theaters because this completely absent customer service that they have whatsoever. I complained and complained and complained and got completely ignored. So but I tweet. I tagged uh, Regal Cinemas. I tagged Marcus Cinemas. Saying, oh, uh, this, the market scene is close to home and the Regal Sim is close to work. I don't need to go to AMC anymore. No, no, no. Regal didn't respond and they said, oh, we've been waiting for you to come back. So, anything like that, I'm perfectly fine. I'm not going to spend all this money on a fucking company that doesn't give a shit. They don't give a shit about the, the maintenance of their places or anything like that. It's terrible. I'm not dealing with these people anymore. So, piss off AMC. So, uh, moving on to much better things. So, the much better thing of my weekend here it was Friday night. 
It was Friday night here. I went to go see a band that is just fucking phenomenal. The fact that I saw them for the very first time this Friday night makes me just that much more exponentially jazzed for them. And this was plush. Old girl rock band, just like hard rock, heavy metal type of stuff. They're phenomenal. Just phenomenal. Headed by Mariah Formica. She got discovered and whatnot back on The Voice, where she covered Crazy on You from Heart. Just absolutely crushed the entire performance. Didn't make it all the way through it, but she's maintained a very steady fan base and whatnot to sing uh, EPs and singles and stuff like that. She's released over the years, but... About two years ago, two and a half years ago, she formed this band with a couple other really, really talented young girls, young ladies and whatnot, and they're just phenomenal. Just, I can't say phenomenal enough. They're absolutely amazing. The quality of what they're putting out there, they've gotten so much a great team around them, management and all that type of stuff, and getting all these things going. They're putting out their second album later this year. They've already put on a new single called Left Behind. Great. It sounds even better than the first album, this single, excellent type of stuff but they're absolutely phenomenal they, one the promoters put on a really rock solid show here the fact that they got supporting acts are all female vocalists so just phenomenal most of them were kind of cover cover bands or whatnot there's one that was doing all original songs to some degree but they're all great vocalists all really solid bands they all put on a great show but Flush just absolutely blisteringly ripped it apart tore the place down the place was it's about a mid-sized place out in West Dundee, so it's kind of a far northwest suburb, about half an hour away from where I am, and it was about a mid-sized venue, and people were up, a, up on all three levels of the entire place. The place was just jammed up, ready to go. They just loved them, and the band put on a fantastic show in this whole thing. It was great. They, they, they do play a couple of covers. They, they played Barracuda, which Mariah just has an incredible voice does so much justice to those and Wilson vocals on those songs. They uh, broke out Heavens on Fire because they were on the Kiss Cruise before. And uh, I think there was at least one other one they did. I'm just kind of blanking on the regard of that. But uh, all they did, Alice in Chains, they did Man in the Box because they were they were a supporting act for them last year. Uh, the Alice in Chains Bush concert tour or whatnot, which I almost went to, but they wouldn't have been on the uh, date I went to because I wasn't feeling that well that day. But Regards to that type of stuff, this show was great. Absolutely fantastic. I got to wear my uh, Mariah Formica little enamel pin when uh, I discovered her about three years ago when she was still doing her solo stuff, but things were in lockdown and stuff like that. And they did her and the original drummer for the band, as she would be, did this kind of remote performance or whatnot between the two of them of Barracuda. And that's the video I saw that got me into her. And all that type of stuff. So, seeing them live would just, it's just completely amplified everything I've been just, that song's been cut, stuck in my head all weekend long. And the best thing is, at the end of the show, bassist Ashley, she was handing out all the set list to everyone right by the stage. Because I got right up near the stage. I was going to get caught in the back or whatnot, like I did on the Michelle Branch thing. I got right up by the stage, right by her. And I got an actual set list for the film. For, for the set list for, for the show and I waited out back for like an hour after the show waiting for them to come out and I got them all to sign the set list for me and they were they had about they had a long drive ahead of them to the next show up in like northern Wisconsin so they had a several hours drive and it was already like past 11 p.m. so they had a long night ahead of them but so I couldn't I, I didn't bother them for a photo or anything like that but they were very much very pleased that the Signed the entire thing. They had another fan they they seemed uh, very familiar with who was also waiting out there. So they, he, he got the majority of the time whatnot, but I, I waited very patiently, stuff like that. And the fact that I got their autographs on this thing and I've got it, had a uh, spare frame laying around. I'm, I've got a place for it on the wall over there. But as you're seeing in the video clips, I kind of grabbed some of their performance. They're just absolutely incredible. Just really, really incredible. I told and I told them so. They were absolutely incredible. So this was a great, this is a great, great, great night, and I, I can't wait for them to come back around. So when, once they get the album out, I'm sure there'll be a whole slew of new dates, whether it's supporting acts or headlining and whatnot. But they were headlining on this one, so they got a fairly long set for this entire show. But I can't say enough of them. Go to plushrocks.net 
and you can find everything that you want from them. You get all the links to the digital music platforms. You can buy the vinyl. You can buy the CD of the first album. Grab the other merch and stuff like that, or just find them anywhere you can. Find the stuff on YouTube for the music videos. Just like these ladies are actually, <laughs> they're just beyond words on that regard. They're so good and they're so very nice. Just they're just young fans who love all this type of music and want to share it with everyone else. And they're just they're just fans like you and I, but they're just extremely talented and put together some fantastic songs. And they just really appreciate the fans so deeply. So go check them out. Absolutely, 100%. You see my enthusiasm? I'm amped up. I want to see these ladies all over again. They're bouncing from, like, Wisconsin to Iowa to Indiana and, and stuff like that. But I think they got a little bit of a break before their next stuff. But they're doing another, like, uh, opening act thing for Bush shortly and stuff like that. So Mariah has been – she's crossed the roads with, like, Joan Jett and – Paul Stanley and a whole bunch of other people here and there. The, like I said, they're on the Kiss Cruise, so they met Paul in that regard. But she's she's she, she's got endorsements from a lot of like rock legends over the last couple of years because she's such a phenomenal voice, such a great person, and grabbing up and teaming up with this entire band here, uh, Ashley and Bella and now Faith. Just awesome, 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 awesome. So guys, before I reiterate anything anymore. I wanted to let you guys know that because I just, it, it, you can see, it's making me glow so much. But trying to bring things a little bit back down. Why well, don't just uh, wrap things up on this entire thing? Just talking about, uh, like I said last time, I was a little, in terms of like movie reviews, I wasn't quite, quite sure exactly where I wanted to go next and what I wanted to do and stuff like that after I finished the next retro video series thing regarding uh, the color grade and heat and stuff like that. So. I, I was rejiggering a couple of things. I threw a couple of things out that have been sitting on the list, and I just felt like a little blase about right now, whatnot. But I was like, okay, I finally, I finally put in a genre for comedy on this thing. And you know, I, I rarely ever cover anything that's comedy. I don't know. It just uh, sometimes it feels like a bit of a an odd genre to kind of grab an angle to do a critique on. But I, I picked out a few things that felt kind of okay. One was Dirty Rotten Scoundrels because I've got the shout select. Blu-ray, and I, I saw this thing in the theater in 88, so I, I, I've loved this thing for a long time. It's like there could be something I could, I, I, I thought about before. It's like maybe I could, I could probably grab an angle on this, because there is a lot of background information, and in fact, this is kind of a, a remake of another film, and the thing's been remade since then. I think there's been a stage production. There's a lot of stuff I can get into as a production end of the whole thing, and there's a fantastic Frank Oz commentary track in the whole thing. So maybe. The other one was the, uh, the Bill Pullman Ben Stiller film Zero Effect doesn't have a Blu-ray yet. It's on HG on streaming and stuff like that, but just a DVD on physical. It's something I could do. I, I haven't watched it in a very long time, but it's another one that has a commentary track from the director. Not really any kind of like behind the scenes featurette type of stuff in that regard. So things on that regard in terms of like using it for grabbing like behind the scenes stuff for video footage to edit into the whole thing and maybe a little tricky on that thing, but it's a consideration. And um, also Sneakers, uh, Robert Redford, Sidney Poitier, Dan Aykroyd, Ben Kingsley, all that type of stuff. It's, it's kind of come and gone in the entire idea of things. I keep I keep picturing in my head of like a shout select Blu-ray of this whole thing and maybe a, maybe a Kino Lover 4K or whatnot. You're thinking that, that thing like, it's, it's got to happen at some point, right? It's a really good film with a very star-studded cast. Universal is pretty good on, on putting out rights and licensing things out. It's got to happen at some point. I don't know how long I'd wait on it. I only have it on DVD because uh, it's a, the Blu-ray is a very old transfer and stuff like that. So it's, it's decent, but it's not great. And there's no additional bonus features from beyond that, aside from uh, a British Region B locked version that was put out uh, some time ago. But it's an idea. It's an idea to kind of hit off in some places. It's an interesting thing. It's got thriller, espionage, but it's got all the comedy banter and stuff like that. So it's got a nice... Uh, balance between the common comedy and the drama type of stuff to kind of get into it. Just got to feel when the time is right. And when I, when I've kind of like has been on the list for a long time, but I grabbed it on Blu-ray several years ago, this Kevin Klein film, the January man, it's not a good, not, not a particularly good film. It, it's, it struggles with its tone between wh what exactly it wants to be. It doesn't want to be a zany comedy. Does it want to be more of a, a dramatic crime thriller or something else like that? Alan Rickman's really good in the film as a supporting actor, but 
Got it. another one with Star Studded Cast, but it'd be kind of an interesting thing to, to kind of get an angle on to a certain degree. But when I got the Blu ray years ago, I was like, this, this, this should technically be the first thing I do in January on whatever year I do it in. And it just never really struck on that regard. But it, it's just an idea. I'm throwing stuff on here that's fresh and a different angle of something else that's kind of different for the channel to kind of get off in some place here and there. And, uh, Another one is Copland, going off to, to, to the drama type of stuff. I was, I was watching a couple of trailers like Copland. Copland's one of those films, like, I don't watch it very often. I probably watch it, like, once a decade. I had it on VHS. I never, almost, like, never watched it on VHS. And I eventually got the DVD. And I already watched the DVD. I don't think I've ever wa- really watched the DVD, but it's an interesting film. Again, another great, great cast. Interesting stuff. James Mangold, usually a pretty reliable director. Good stuff. And he's kind of like, he put it out there a little while ago. It's like, oh, Miramax hit me up for like a 4K or something like that. I think it's time for us to do a 4K. So maybe Paramount will do that at some point in time. Who knows? But it's an idea to throw out there. And it's Stallone, De Niro, Ray Liotta, really good stuff. It's, it's a really well-regarded film that definitely could use more attention to some degrees. And I, and as as I was watching the first Mission Impossible, it's like, man, Jean Reno. I really should do a review on Leon at some point in time. Probably should. I've got the freaking remastered Blu-ray back here from years ago. And uh, also, talk, talking about something that's kind of a Gary Oldman corrupt cop thing. I was watching, watching a trailer for Romeo is Bleeding, which I've had on DVD for like 14 years and never watched. like, man, this thing looks really goddamn good. Why haven't I watched this thing yet? So I might watch that one in, in, a, in a short time or whatnot. That might, might pump up, up, bump up on the list quickly. So... Think about it. It does have a Blu-ray out there from Send Piper Pictures, but there's nothing particularly interesting on it. So there's one from BFI in in the UK that had a little extra things from the director, like a long interview from them. But again, I think that's a regional plaque type of thing. So here, there, everywhere, stuff like that here. Think about things. Of course, I probably should have region free player, but I don't. But here and there, there, everywhere, whatnot. So there's some ideas. I'm throwing some ideas out there that are fresh to kind of spice up things. I had training. I threw. I threw 28 Days Later on the, on this list because that's definitely a film I watch once a decade. I watched it in the theater. I thought it was a, a pretty freaking incredible film. I watched it about literally about nine, ten years later. I did a written review for the old blog, the old blog while I was doing this, doing the Forever Horror Month, like one at least one horror movie review every single day throughout the October 2012. So I reviewed it back then. I rewatched it and reviewed it back then. I haven't watched it since. Because it's a very heavy, bleak film. But I was like, uh, not that I'm doing it. Not that I'm doing it right now. It's like, oh, it's Killian Murphy. He's got a fucking movie coming out. It's like, ah, oh, no, no, no. Just slow down, man. Slow down. Don't push yourself. It's an idea. I don't think I need to get the Blu-ray because you know how the film was shot. If you've seen the film, you know how it was shot. But maybe. I don't know. Anything like that. It's not going to look enormously better on Blu-ray because it was shot on standard definition video. So I don't know. But... I got the Blu-ray of Blair Witch Project, and I was shot on, like, high 8 and freaking 8mm or 16mm film and whatnot, and it was, it was still worthwhile because I really love that film. But anything like that, so th- th- these are considerations. Stuff like that here and there, because I got that soundtrack for Pirates of the Caribbean, Curse of the Black Pearl. I did throw it on here on my list and whatnot, so it'd be nice to talk about the soundtrack again. <laughs> anything like that. It's a really good film. I'll see what, see why I feel about it in due time and whatnot. But I also put in, because I have the Crow City of Angels on DVD and also Crow Salvation. It's like, I'm interested in doing something about City of Angels, but there's no new information out there to talk about anything. Because Cecil over on Good, Good Bad Flicks put, put together a very, very comprehensive video, I think, I don't know, seven years ago or something almost like that. A long time ago. But there's no new information to grab beyond what he already covered in that video. So, like, I'm interested to talk about it, but it's like, I've got no new ground to cover. There's no new version coming out. There's no new interviews. There's no new nothing. It's the same old recycled information. I just feel like i got nothing new to add to the conversation. So, I may jump over to Crow Salvation and talk about that. <laughs> I liked it at the time when it came out, but I eventually, like, never really rewatched on DVD. And then I sold it off. And about three years ago, I just figured... Ah, oh, fuck, I'll, I'll grab them both on DVD. Who gives a shit? So, I don't know. It's an idea. If I get get into the mood for it, I decide to rewatch it and shit like that. So, whatever. Ideas. There are ideas out there floating in the wind to get some fresh 
stuff going on in my head. Like, I keep looking at the same list of films I've been looking at for I don't know how long. Throw some new stuff in there. See if it sticks. See if I, 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 I generate interest to kind of go at it, rewatch it, get some ideas of it, see if there's something I want to share about it. Just stuff like that. So that's all I have to share for you guys today. So thank you so much for watching this update. It feels a little bit more substantive than the last one, I feel. I feel, feel the last one's a little, maybe, maybe not, my, maybe not my, my best update. It wasn't terrible, but this one does, does, it definitely feels like I have something enthusiastic and something great to talk about in, this, in some regards and some things with a certain amount of conviction to talk about as well. So, in other cases, you guys let me know down in the comments what, not what you feel about this update, stuff I've talked about in this whole thing, and uh, hopefully next time I'll have some media pickups for you. I don't know. I'm I'm going to grab, like I said, I'm going to grab Scream 6 eventually. I'm just kind of like, oh, maybe if I wait a week or two, maybe I can find a deal or something else like that that's a little less than what it is right now. I don't know. But uh, probably by the time me and Steve hook up for the next commentary, I'll have it, and I'll probably lend it to him if he hasn't seen it already or something else like that. I don't know. Anyway, in that regard, so guys, thanks so much. You always can uh, support the channel through Patreon, the Super Thanks feature below, or just keep commenting, liking, sharing things around. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Everything helps out to feed the algorithm and just keep going because that's good stuff. So guys, thanks so much. Take care. Bye-bye.